Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today we are going to go over UV mapping. This is the third part of the tutorial on how to build a desk and its assets. So, so far we have modeled the desk as well as all of the assets, and we are ready to start UV mapping. Okay, so when you're going to UV map an object, the first thing you need to see is what type of shape applies to this object. So for example, when you take a look at UVs, there's really only three options. You have cylindrical, planar, and spherical. So cylindrical is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to project in a cylinder. Planar is going to be flat and spherical means that it's going to be a sphere. So when I take a look at my desk, I am going to think, okay, this has a lot of planes in comparison to this guy, which is, has a lot of cylinders. This is a lot of planes, this is a lot of planes, and this is a lot of planes. Okay, here at the top right, there is a UV editing. So we're gonna bring, activate that. And this is the default UVs of a cube. So we've already altered this beyond a cube. So we need to match the geometry the way this looks like onto here. So imagine as if you are peeling an apple and you're taking off or the skin and you're laying it flat, you're gonna draw on it and then put it back on. Or think of it like a paper doll. You are painting on a paper, you're gonna cut it and put it together. It's the same thing as this. We're gonna be taking the, the geometry of this, laying it out flat so that we can bring it into Photoshop to texture. There is another option and it's called automatic. Usually when I do automatic, it causes a lot of pieces. So if you are, and it works okay in hard surface, but if you try to do like organic, for example, this is a little bit of an organic. If you try using automatic mapping, it's going to create this mess. And then you have, you're going to spend a lot of time trying to fix it. But for the desk, it actually looks, eh, it looks okay. It's not the best. I'm going to undo, um, just to show you. Another thing you want to take a look at is the grid. This grid is going to help you when you select it. You're going to see that there is this lots of little squares and this is what the texture will fall on the object. So if I take a look at the 3D model, you see how stretched out that is. That means if I try to put a texture on it, it will look like this, but it's supposed to look like this. So that's a, that's a problem. Our goal when we UV map is to make sure that our object looks like it has a grid. Even this is a little bit better, but it still looks like a rectangle. I'm trying to aim for a square. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off for now because it's a little distracting. As I mentioned before, I'm going to just go ahead and do UV map automatic mapping. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it did an okay job, um, but I have a lot of cleaning up to do. So what I want to do is to prevent as many seams as possible. So you see how there's all these white lines here. That means that they need to be, I can sew them together so that when I texture them, they won't have any weird transition. So if I take a look at this, do you see how this cube just kind of ends and then it starts halfway through? If I put a texture there, it's going to do the same thing. And I really want to avoid that. So I'm going to sew them together so that when I texture it, it will be smooth. So the best way to uh, attach edges, I'm going to double click here on the edges. Notice that it selects two edges. That means they belong together. I'm going to go to cut and sew over here and then say stitch together. Now they've moved and they're attached. So now I take a look at this and notice how the cube, first of all, looks like squares and then it transitions evenly to the other square. And, and this is great. This is exactly what I want. Okay, I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna go to the other side. I wanna avoid seams here. If I'm gonna have a seam, I wanna make sure it's hidden. So I'm gonna grab this and do stitch together. I'm gonna to grab these guys here at the front Again, I'm kind of keeping an eye out, making sure everything's okay. And then I'm going to stitch together. Okay, great. All right, so that is the top. Let's talk about the sides. So we have the sides here as well. And you can see that the sides are here. I'm going to stitch together here. And then I'm also going to double, whoops, you don't want to do that. Double click here. And then I'm going to stitch together. So when I go to faces and I double click on these, you'll notice that I have all of this selected. And if I take a look at my grid, everything is going really great. I have, do you see how that transition is from one corner to the other? That's a nice transition, that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. So if I put textures on there, it's going to be, it's gonna fall smoothly. All right, so this is the top of the desk. Let's go ahead and start working on the legs. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna move it aside. 
So for this one might be a little bit challenging because it's got a lot more pieces, but let's see what we can do. Uh, let's start with the legs. I want to go ahead and attach the legs. I just want to make sure I don't do anything crazy. So these guys belong together. So I'm going to stitch together. I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to stitch together as well. And what I'm trying to do is avoid what's called overlapping. So do you see how these guys got overlapped? I'm going to turn this on. You see how it's darker here? Um, that's gonna, that means that we have some overlap, so I'm probably going to undo that. Um, I am going to grab, let's see. Okay, so, whoops, no, okay. Thank goodness for undo. Okay, I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to stitch together. So this belongs to that one, and I don't want that. I don't, otherwise, it will overlap. I'm going to stitch together and stitch together. So that's the leg. So one side's going to be the front, one's going to be the back. Okay. Let's go back to this. Notice that there's a base down here. I think I'm just going to go ahead and assign this too. It will stick together here. There you go. And that one's going to be okay. Cause if I grab this one and I try to stitch together, it's going to stretch and I don't want that. So now I have the, now I'm pretty confident I got the whole table. Okay. Going back to the legs. Okay. So I want to actually try to stitch together. I don't want that one. I'm going to grab this one stitch together. And if I try this, it would actually flip it. So I'm just going to undo and leave them as is. So faces. Okay, so this is here and here. Okay. Just want to make sure I grabbed, I think I grabbed everything, including the bottom. Nope. You see how the bottom is all by itself? So let's grab the edge here and let's see. Let's grab a better edge. Maybe this one. Okay, let's grab this one. Trying to see where the connection is. All right. Well, it's right here. Stitch together. I'm going to grab the bottom here too. Stitch together. And let's double check. I'm going to face, double click here, double click here. What I'm trying to do is confirming that I've selected all the faces. So notice that I haven't done these or these. So I got to find out where they're, where they need to be stitched. So I'm going to select this edge. Okay, perfect. Stitch together. I'm going to grab this edge. Stitch together. Okay. And let's, oh boy. Okay, this guy versus this one. So I'm really trying to avoid overlapping. So I'm going to stitch together there and then I'm going to grab this one. They're connected, so I don't want that. This one belongs here, so I'm going to stitch together. And they belong here, so I'm not going to do that. That one's got some overlap, and then I'm going to stitch it together here. Okay, let's double check. Face, double click, shift, du shift, double click. And I think this time I have, whoa, have it all, and this belongs to that one, so everything's good there. Okay, cool. So again, the whole thing is about just trying to stitch as many as you can without um, overlapping. Little Q. Okay, next. If I press Q, it gets rid of all the manipulators, so I stop moving these things by accident. So this one is very similar. I'm going to grab these edges, and I'm going to stitch together. Then I'm hoping that I can get these guys together. Okay, good. So I can stitch those together. So far, so good. And I've got a lot of little pieces, so I'm going to make a selection and do stitch together. So again, I'm trying to avoid any overlapping. And I can see that there's, you know, if they're by themselves, I can basically find out where they're located. So these guys, for example, can be stitched. Whoa. Let's see. So that can be connected. And then if I do that, it's going to overlap. So maybe that's not the best option. Let's see. I can stitch that together, and then these guys can go here and here. Okay, so that is how you UV map this one. If we take a look at the grid, the best we've done the best that we can. Um, 
God, that needs some love there. Um, and now that we've UV mapped it, well, now we need to place it in a zero to one space. So the zero to one space is from here to here, zero to one, double click. I'm gonna scale it down. This is usually the top of the desk. Uh, this is the supports. And here's the other one as well. So um, I'm just gonna grab these and move them aside because I want the whole desk, including the cabinets, to be in the same texture sheet. And then what I'm gonna also do is put the lamps and the laptop in a separate texture sheet. So that way I only have two files for textures, one that is just gonna have the desk and then one that's gonna have the assets. Let's work in on this one. Okay, so if you take a look at the grid, it looks like a nightmare. So again, I'm gonna go to UV map, I'm gonna try automatic. Usually that works, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it doesn't look too bad at all. So that makes me happy cautiously happy. So same story, I want to take a look at this and see if I can somehow stitch everything together without causing too much harm. So I'm going to stitch these guys together and I'm going to, there's a couple little pieces here. So I'm going to go in and see if I can just stitch everything together. G, G, G. Okay, so things are stitching all the way along, which is great. These guys also belong together and these belong together. So perfect. Take a look at my grid. It's not too bad. Moving on. So that means that the front face is completely stitched together. Let's go ahead and grab these guys and G again. So now this is a long cabinet. The challenging part's probably going to be the inside, right? So they should be stitched together, but they're probably going to be by themselves. So I want the interior to be by itself. So here's the interior, already stitched it together. Um, let's find out. This one is the base. If you're not sure, you can always go to faces and select it. Yes, so that's the bottom of the cabinet. This is the front, the si this is the front, the left, the right side, and the back. Uh, this is the inside of the cabinet. So again, if you go to faces, you can kind of find out what it is. And now we got to figure out what these guys are. So this is the top. So if I want to, I can put the top and the bottom together, stitch together. So notice that it looks like a cube, like an elongating cube, just like how we started. But there's a lot more information here. Okay, so let's find out. This is the back. So let's stitch together with the back. So that means that these guys are in one unit. And these, this is the rest of the cabinet. And then we've got these wanderers. So usually when you see something this tight, it just means that there's a lot of edges. So they all belong kind of in here. So I'm going to stitch together. I'm going to go over here. It's probably the bottom, I'm going to guess. I'm going to stitch together as well. And now that should do it. Let's double check. Everything looks like a grid. It's significantly better than what it was. Awesome sauce. And now we have two pieces that are UV mapped and now we want to place it all in the zero to one space. The zero to one space is here to here. You have to make sure that grid is the same size because the texture is going to fall the same way. So notice how big this one is and how small. There is a layout option here. So if you, you can try it, I'm usually a little hesitant because I end up cleaning it up anyway, but let's, I just want to show you what it looks like. Layout. And what we can do is click on layout and then it tries to put everything in the zero to one space for you it doesn't always do a very good job so for example i'm still having issues with the grid size it's a little better not really so that means i have to manually do it myself actually i'm going to need this so the top of the desk needs to have more texture information and it needs to match the cabinet so it's going to take a little bit of finessing but i think if I scale some of these things and move them around, I should be able to get them to fit in the zero to one space with as much equal grid as possible. Another thing you want to make sure is that you don't overlap. You see how that was overlapped? Yeah, we can't have overlapped textures because that's going to cause some major, major issues. Okay, so, so far we have this. I can make this slightly bigger. I can make this one slightly bigger. 
I might be able to move this one, make it even slightly bigger, even bigger still. Then I can move this here. Now, unfortunately, uh, it flipped my cabinet. So that means if I try to put textures on it, it's going to go, um, you see how the U is sideways? I don't want that. I actually want to make my life as easy as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this. Yeah, so I want the numbers facing the correct way. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. And honestly, the better way will be to transform. And I am going to rotate it the other way. There we go. So this will make things just slightly less. It's going to look better this way. So let's take a look at this too. If I go over here and I try to texture, it's going to cause me issues. So I want to make sure that the textures are going to fall predictably. Okay, so now I know that the numbers and letters are going to fall accordingly. So now I've got to place them. Now these are my two predominant textures. So that's where I'm going to spend the time making sure that they fit. I'm going to see if I can squeeze all this together now that everything has moved. It's going to take a little touching. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's see if I can put you somewhere else. The inside, let's see, let's flip you a little bit. Double check to make sure the texture is falling accordingly. I don't want anything unpredictable. It's pretty close. I need to be a slightly smaller. And then I try to keep items that are the same together so it's easier to texture. So for example, these are the legs. These guys are the legs, so or this side. So I want to make sure that they're as close to, to each other as possible. Again, I'm going to rotate this and move this down. There we go. Okay, is there any wiggle room here? So my goal is to try to get as much of the zero to one space as possible. So I don't want it to accidentally get past the grid, but I'm also going to try to scale them as much as possible so that it's nice and big so I can put as much texture information as possible. Okay, that is how you UV map a desk. Let's go ahead and select these two, edit, delete by type history, modify, again, freeze transformation, file, save as. Oops, I forgot these guys. They're tiny. Let's grab everything here. So they belong here too. So I'm going to scale them and squeeze them in. Now I'm not going to put too much texture on it. It's, these are probably just going to be chrome. So I'm not going to UV map them. Uh, if I was going to put like fingerprints and stuff like that, I would definitely UV map them. But I think in this case, I can just leave them as is. So if I select the group, again, if you press the up arrow in your keyboard, you will get the group and you can see that everything's fit in in perfectly. Awesome. Save. Okay, guys, thank you so much for listening. I truly appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like it, share it in social media and with your friends. I would truly appreciate it. Um, I know that was a lot of information, but let's go ahead and move forward to UV mapping the assets. All right, let's, I will see you next time.